Welcome back to Vancouver Carpenter. So right here, you guys, we have a classic mesh tape crack. So this could be from a number of things. Uh, my guess is it actually might be from improper fastening. Hopefully it's not from poor framing, like say where two studs are joined together improperly so they're able to shift, because I can't really fix that without opening up the wall. Um, let's hope that it's just improper fastening and maybe a poor choice of mud, but let's take a closer look and see what we can figure out. So the first thing that leads me to believe this is improper fastening is when I push on it, I can move the drywall. So obviously, I mean, no matter how you taped it, if the drywall, the two sheets can move independently from one another, it's gonna crack no matter what you tape it with. So one of the other things that can cause a mesh tape crack is if the joint wasn't full. Maybe they just put the mesh tape on and they put mud on and they only got about an eighth of an inch in here. But when I push on the mud, it's not cracking and going in. So there was probably enough mud in this joint. The whole thing was just poorly fastened. All right, now that I know what the problem is, I can start to figure out what the solution is. So obviously refastening the drywall is gonna be one of the first things. And we're also gonna to have to chamfer out this joint. So what I mean by chamfer out the joint is find where the crack starts. And what we're gonna be doing is just carving it at about a 45 degree angle, roughly. And we just wanna get that cracked, separated mud out of there. That's the main goal here. That's always the first thing that you do when doing a mesh tape repair. Oop, that went a little far. So there's not much buildup here, so I'm not gonna actually worry about pulling the mesh tape out and trying to get a recess. I'm just gonna carve enough of this out that I have a nice solid chunk in here. And ideally, ideally it helps to get the old mud out, if you can. But, but whenever you can, try and get that old mud out of there. Basically, if we wanna stand, you know, if we want to have a good shot at actually repairing this, we need to get it back to pretty close to square one in terms of being able to glue the joint back together. So both of these boards are moving pretty well, which yeah, it's just not enough fasteners. So normally you're supposed to use setting compound, so like quick set muds with mesh tape, but those will fail too. Mesh or a quick set will fail with mesh tape as well if it's not properly fastened. I've also seen a lot of joints with mesh tape and regular mud hold up indefinitely. If the board's really well fastened and there's not a lot of seasonal movement, it can hold up indefinitely. All right, there we go. That's nice and empty again. And it goes right up to about here. This little space is gonna be one of the parts of the office that I film in. And I just didn't want to be looking at this mesh tape crack on camera all the time. And when I'm trying to think about what I have to say to the camera. So, all right, there we go. So now we can get some mud in there. Before we break out the mud though, we got to solve obviously the root of the problem, which is poor fastening. I'm just taking my time with the impact driver. Yes, I have drywall drills. I needed this for something else though, and I didn't feel like bringing both tools inside the house. And if we're just doing a small repair, there's no need to get the specialized tools out. It's not like I'm hanging a few sheets or anything. So yeah, I can see it's not moving now. I can see there's like a 1 8 lip here where this board kind of needs to get sucked down. This was the more solid board but it still needs something. And thankfully there is wood. So it's not like the stud was way over on this side or anything. Thankfully I'm able to grab. I should say the screws are able to grab because if they weren't, that would be a pretty big challenge actually. I would just have to angle the screws to the best of my ability, hoping that they're actually doing something. Okay, and you gotta look for blown out spots. Like here we have a nice big blown out spot. I 
you know, you want to fix all the damaged board. So you can see what there was there. That's because there was, oh, there was, this was held in by nails. Okay. <laughs> now I'm going to have to get something to pound that in a little bit. I don't think that's under the level of the board. That's what happens when you hit the nails too hard. I mean, nails kind of suck anyways, but definitely if you don't know how to install them. Hopefully there's something here. Uh, yeah, a whole, a whole lot of air. So we're not gonna fasten this one. Because there's nothing there. But that is now ready. Time to mix up some mud. The next thing you're gonna wanna do is vacuum it out really well so that the new mud can get a nice bond to the edge of the drywall. That way it'll be a nice strong joint. So I just mixed up some five minute quick set. This is the uh, Hamilton brand that I love. So I haven't added any glue to it. You'll notice I do that in some of my videos. The adding glue is something I do because some of the locally available products in my area just don't have good adherence. And they've failed me a few times. Adherence, <laughs> adhesion. Okay, so I'm pre-filling right now to really make sure that we get that joint nice and full. After it's full, I'm gonna be doing a bit of a cheat. So normally I would recommend, you know, let this stuff actually set up before installing your tape. But what I'm going to do, <laughs> unfortunately this is 20 minute mud, so I gotta work pretty quick. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait about five minutes for the really dry edges of the drywall to suck the moisture out of the mud. And then it'll be firm enough that I can lay some tape down and do the repair. If I do it right now, there's a risk, especially of a bulbous area like this, just kind of falling out and making the tape stick out in that area, which is why I would usually recommend pre-filling and waiting for it to set up and then scraping it down. So in this case, we will just wait for it to uh, pull some of the moisture out. It's now been about five minutes and you can see where I wiped it mostly flat, it's pulled in so much. So that is from the dry edges pulling that moisture in. In the bigger spots, it hasn't shrunk as much, but you can see it's just sucking it right in. Okay, so I've actually chosen to use Fibafuse for this repair. Uh, this was a six inch roll that I just cut down the middle to make these little three inch pieces. You can get it in two inch wide rolls. It's great stuff, especially for repairs like this because it lays down so much flatter. You could do this with paper tape or even with mesh tape. I'm serious, even though mesh tape failed because we did such a good job refastening it, cleaning it out and getting that new mud in there, the mesh tape would probably actually hold up. But uh, once bitten, twice shy. So I'm gonna continue on with this stuff because I know it will do the job long term. Now, one of the things about using Fibafuse is you don't want your mud too thick. So even though I'd love this stuff to thicken up a little bit, um, I won't be able to actually get the Fibafuse on if I wait. So what we're gonna do, we'll start on this little top one. Pretty easy. You want to spread it pretty thin, like no more than an eighth. Otherwise, you're gonna struggle getting the mud out from underneath. So it's pretty straightforward. I'm just wiping in multiple different directions. If you have a brand new taping knife, the sharp square edges can tear this stuff pretty easily. And if you run your knife over it really hard too many times, you can tear this stuff, then it's gonna fail. So you gotta be careful of that, but that's pretty good right there. Okay, I'm gonna butter this up. Yeah, it's just starting to thicken up, but I'm gonna make sure that I apply the mud really thin. And the beauty with this stuff is like, if you don't get quite enough mud on the wall, you can still, like it bleeds through the top a little bit so that you don't get those nasty, unexpected dry spots. But yeah, I'm hustling now. I probably only have maximum 10 minutes before this stuff sets up to an unworkable state. It's a pleasure how easily this stuff tears too. I'm, I'm gonna avoid overlapping it, so we'll go just under. But yeah, same thing. Just slowly and carefully wipe this stuff out.
Yeah, I know you guys don't see me use this stuff very often. It's because I just don't really carry it around. I only have it for the, uh, the large repairs, like plaster repairs and stuff. But it lays so flat. And this, this three inch wide piece is gonna be even easier to hide because it's just like such a big flat piece of tape. Okay, I'm pretty happy with how this is turning out. That um, spot with the big blowout there isn't bulging. So, the great thing, I'm happy with how flat it is. I mean, this wall was not flat to begin with. You can tell by the like quarter inch here, quarter inch here. So we're gonna have a huge hump, but it's not worth fixing that, in my opinion, on this job. And now that this is all sitting so nice and flat, I'm really happy with it. Before this mud fully kicks off, I'm actually gonna give this a quick coat just to speed up the process. Not a thick one, just kind of filling in the edges. Yeah, it's literally just setting up right now. When I said 10 minutes, I was wrong. It was uh, about three minutes that I had left. So we're not putting much over the top of the tape right now. I'm just building out the edges. Yeah, gotta love spreading mud that's kicking off, but hey, oh, and especially when there's still a screw to fix. I don't know if you guys can even see that. Oh, of course it's a nail. Thanks, original owner. I'm just gonna use a drill bit and a hammer to sink that nail a little bit under the surface so it doesn't cause me so much grief. And now while there's still time, oh, barely, it's getting harder by the sec, <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> the mud is thickening up by the second. <laughs> I'm starting to sound like a Viagra ad for a second there. <laughs> Sorry guys. <laughs> oh boy, I'm in trouble now. <laughs> I love this knife. This is like one of my old eight inch blue steel knives. I've had this knife almost since I started taping. It just hasn't seen a lot of use, even though I love it. So it's still in such good shape, but it's also something to be said about the flex and feel of a nice blue steel knife. They just, they feel so good. All right, that's good enough. I'm fussing with it now. Okay, hopefully it's kicked off enough. Yep. All right, now that it is kicked off, we need to really quickly knock down the lap marks. I've already mixed my quick set. So it's, you know, sitting in my pan, ready to put on the wall, but I just need to knock down any little high spots so that we can get this next coat on. But we're pretty far ahead, you know? We skipped both the pre-fill and the, um, like we got the pre-fill tape and first coat kind of all in the same mix. So you can do it once you start to become proficient, but it definitely, you know, takes some skill, right? You gotta know what you're doing and, and be familiar with the materials you're using. And it is now, yeah, ready for, so this is the coat that's really gonna kind of skim it out and not quite skim. No, we're gonna do another top coat on top of this, believe it or not. But this is the one that's gonna be giving it its defining shape. Some of you might be wondering why I'm using a pan and knife. Well, it's just easier when you're mixing quick set. You use a pan and knife because you mix small batches in the pan. It's easy. All right, sorry you guys. I'm not talking about the stages of coating in this. What I mean is I'm not teaching the basics of like, you know, feather, fill, pass, blah, blah, blah. Um, you know, like basically I need to get this on the wall <laughs> and get it smoothed out before it kicks off. So I don't really have the time to explain the nuances of all the coats, but you guys know, if you've been following a while, you know I have a billion videos on that. So I know you're not deprived. You may be depraved, <laughs> but you're not deprived. Okay, 
If you're getting something out of this video, feather that like button. I'll check my blade, yep, we're the right way. That's good enough. Okay, this has had some time to set up. I scraped it down a little bit while it was in the magic state where it can be easily filed down or whatever you want to call it, scraped. Time to skim it. Okay, we are now just gonna skim this with some, this is just some topping mud. It could be topping, all purpose, all purpose light. Basically it's some air drying mud just so that the paint sticks to it real nice and it, that it sands easily. And because we already did a pretty good job here, I'm not gonna worry too much about trying to leave much on here. This is just a nice tight skim coat to make our life easy when we sand. Crusties, big more crusties. <laughs> oh, it's gonna take a little bit more mud on there. It happens. <clears throat> it especially happens when doing quick set work. Ugh, come on. I just want this to be done. Feather that edge. All right, we are almost there. That looks good enough there. Okay, in case you were wondering if uh, there's some Adidas sponsorship going on in this video. <laughs> no, that's just the shoe box that I have a bunch of receipts in. Nothing fishy going on here. And why did I go back to the hawk and trowel instead of keep using the pan and knife? Well, I was done mixing quick set. So I'd rather just use what I'm most proficient with now at this point. I mean, why wouldn't I? Okay, let's get some finished passes here. <laughs> some Swedish passes. <laughs> Some Canadian passes. <laughs> uh, sorry guys. I know you like the finish passes best. All right, we're getting pretty close here. Pretty close. Just a little bit of tiddling. Oh, one more, one more. Let's bring that in from up here and just try and get that nice and close. All right, oh, do I dare? I don't even know if you can see all those lift off. That's good enough. Now it's time to stop messing with it. Okay, now let's take a look at this. As we can see, just some basic little lift offs, easy sanding, it's generally looking super smooth. I'm happy with that. So, you know, that repair was basically roughly about an hour's worth of work between the waiting for the quick set to set. Well, you guys, that is how to handle the classic mesh tape crack. So let's summarize that, because it really is really simple. I showed you guys kind of the advanced professional way to fix it, but it's basically carve out that crack, get out the loose mud, uh, refasten where necessary. Just if the board is moving, refasten it because it needs it and this one did next you got to pre-fill it and you can do this whole thing with regular air drying muds waiting between coats for drying so what i mean is waiting overnight for the mud to dry properly because when we're using quick set that doesn't dry it what it does is it sets allowing me to apply another coat because it's not going to be mushy and moving all over the place but this is still going to take probably about three days to dry. Unless I put a big fan blasting on it overnight, then it would be dry in the morning. I'm probably not going to, so this is gonna take about three, three days to dry. 
Anyways, um, let me get back to that. So what were we talking about? We talked about the pre-fill and then you can tape it with whatever tape, you know, if you're using Quickset, like I said, you could get away with mesh tape. Why bother? It's already failed. So either paper tape or FibaFuse is gonna do really well. I will link uh, the FibaFuse in the description of the video below if you're looking for it. It's definitely a good tape. I like the stuff, I just don't use it very often for whatever reason. And next, you're gonna need two to three coats, whatever it takes to actually hide that tape. Actually, it's not about hiding the tape, it's about hiding the joint. It's easy to hide the tape by creating a little uh, mound over it. It's hard to hide the joint, you gotta go big. Anyways, you guys, I hope you got something out of this video. It's a pretty basic repair. Uh, it's just a little labor intensive. But as you can see, it's actually pretty quick if you know what you're doing. Like this, I, I could be in and out of a job, you know, down to the final coat in like an hour or less. If I was using five minute mods, which would be a little bit too fast. Um, yeah, I could get it done really fast, but bill for two or four hours. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why I've been talking about this. If you're still here, I don't even know why you're still watching. I hope your project's going well. Um, thanks for watching. Till the next one, you guys.